hypothyroidism. It just means a low thyroid level. As we get older, especially over 50, we tend to start losing some of our hormones. For women, it can be pretty dramatic. After about 45 or so, women start getting hot flashes, night sweats, they have trouble sleeping, they gain weight, get depressed, anxious, uh, they have brain fog, and maybe a bunch of other very obvious symptoms. That loss of hormones is all about menopause. After 45 or 50, men start to feel sluggish, gain weight, have very little energy, get a lot of muscle weakness. That's exactly what happened to me. Like many men in our 50s, it was all about my low testosterone. For both men and women, there's another factor besides menopause and low T that's contributing to the way we feel after 50. Low thyroid, sometimes called hypothyroid, is extremely common, especially in women and especially after age 50. It's also not something that most people think of right away when they start feeling like crap and they aren't sure what to do about it. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources, mostly about hormones and hormone optimization. If you stay to the end of this video, I'll tell you how I just might be able to help you find what I call a hormone optimization specialist in your area. That's somebody who knows all about thyroid issues, as well as menopause and low testosterone. Somebody who knows exactly what to do about hypothyroid situations, so you can feel your best. Maybe you've been diagnosed with either low thyroid or hypothyroidism. Maybe you're just feeling kind of terrible and you're not really sure why. It could be that you felt terrible, suspected your thyroid, and you went to your doctor, but your lab results come back normal. So I guess you'll just have to learn to live with that, right? Another common scenario is that your thyroid hormones are actually low and your labs say so. Your doctor puts you on something called Synthroid or also called Levothyroxine to treat your diagnosed hypothyroidism. That's the standard treatment for low thyroid. and It's one of the most frequently prescribed drugs in the whole world. But it's not uncommon that Levothyroxine doesn't seem to make any difference in any of your symptoms, even after you start taking it you're still feeling exhausted all the time. You still feel like taking a nap. You can't get enough sleep at all, and you feel like napping in the middle of the day while you're at work. Your energy to do just about anything is completely zapped. You get kind of thinning hair, you've gained weight from what seems like out of nowhere. You're feeling kind of weak and listless. You may have noticed a decrease in your sex drive. That can happen in both men and women. Low thyroid affects almost every system of our bodies. So what are the seven things that you need to know about thyroid hormones? Well, this is a very basic introduction to thyroid hormones. I have a simple framework that probably won't be surprising at all. I use the acronym THYROID, T-H-Y-R-O-I-D. The T in our thyroid acronym stands for thyroid physiology. First of all, there's a gland that's at the base of your brain, right in the middle of your head, underneath your brain. It's called the hypothalamus. It makes a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH. TRH is a message that gets delivered to a gland that's also right next door to your hypothalamus at the bottom of your brain. That gland is called the pituitary. The pituitary releases a separate hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. TSH goes through the bloodstream down to the thyroid gland, which is in your neck right underneath your Adam's apple. TSH tells your thyroid gland to produce two different thyroid hormones. They're called T3 and T4. T3 is the active hormone. T4 doesn't really do all that much, but it kind of can be converted into T3 if you need to. The H in our framework is about health risks. Even more important than low thyroid symptoms are the long-term health risks that you're likely to experience if your thyroid stays low. Things like heart disease and brain disease, reproductive problems, PCOS, infertility, even some cancers, metabolic pro problems that tend to lead to type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis. The why in our framework is your systems all run on thyroid. It has an impact on your heart, your bones, your muscles, your brain. Your temperature regulation system, without adequate thyroid, you'll feel cold all the time. Your metabolism slows down if you don't have enough thyroid. Thyroid's designed to speed up your metabolism, and without it, you'll gain weight and not be able to get it off. Your reproductive system won't work right. Low sex drive, infertility, menstrual problems, erectile dysfunction. 
You'll have dry, itchy skin. Your hair will get thin. Your heart will tend to be weak and you'll feel tired all the time. Your bones get brittle and you could be at risk for osteoporosis. Your brain gets foggy or you could even lose your memory. Your muscles can get weak. The R in our framework is the risks of thyroid replacement. Some physicians can be so conservative worrying about those risks that patients really have to suffer needlessly with low thyroid. The two most feared risks of thyroid are osteoporosis, which is a loss of bone due to high thyroid levels, and then heart problems like a fast heart rate that's due to thyroid replacement. But the evidence isn't very strong that these are all that common. More common are the health risks that come with not treating low thyroid. This is where it's really important to have somebody who really knows about thyroid treating your thyroid issues. The O in our framework is that optimal is not normal when it comes to thyroid levels. If you've been told to, that your thyroid level is normal, that may not be the whole picture. People tend to feel and function best when their thyroid levels are optimal, rather than just barely squeaking into the normal range. The I in our framework is iodine, along with selenium and protein. Not enough of those nutrients means that you could have low thyroid. Nutrition has a lot to do with optimal thyroid levels. Iodine's been added to table salt since the 1920s, and a lot of us, frankly, eat too little salt. Yeah, that's a thing. And because of that, we get too little iodine. Low protein diets like vegetarian and vegan diets might deprive you of the essential amino acid tyrosine, and that's a really important part of thyroid hormones. You'll also want to make sure you get enough selenium. That's a mineral that's involved in thyroid production. The D in our thyroid framework is desiccated thyroid or T3 and T4 combinations. The standard of care treatment of low thyroid usually involves levothyroxine, as I mentioned. Because not everybody can convert levothyroxine to T3, many people still feel terrible on levothyroxine alone. It's often helpful to include T3 or lyothyronine, as it's also called. Several thyroid medications include both T4 or levothyroxine and T3 hormones. One of them is called desiccated thyroid. It's a drug that's derived from dried pig thyroid glands. The brand names include Armour Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, and NP Thyroid, among others. There's also synthetic T3 or lyothyronine. It's called Cytomel, and it can be given along with levothyroxine. And then you can also, from a compounding pharmacy, get a combination of T4 and T3 hormones. As I mentioned, if you have thyroid problems, or you think you might, it's a great idea to talk with a hormone optimization specialist, somebody who really knows what they're doing with thyroid. If you click the link on this page and let me know your city, your zip code, and your email address, I'll check and see if I know a specialist in your area. I won't guarantee anything, but I just might be able to point you in the right direction. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to get updates whenever I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon.